So I awoke in the middle of the night on the second day there to see this snow illuminated by the yellow street lamps outside. I was still very ill and recovering, but I did manage to poke my head outside the window to see this very temporary winter wonderland. This was late season snow. Within a day, all of this would disappear. And yet it reminded me of being in Switzerland at Labrie in the little village of Waymo. And we are up in the mountains here, but it's not that high. There, there are small mountains between Lyon and Grenoble. Grenoble. But I kind of came to myself by just sitting in front of the fireplace all day. I, I didn't have... I did some things on the computer, but I didn't really have the wherewithal to do much else. But somehow feeding the fire of this wood stove helped me bring me back to a semblance of normal life. And it was very dry as well. The room was a bit on the damp side. But when I finally started to step outside, I started to explore the walls and the confines of this old French maison that I was uh, staying in. A wonderful old place. And then I started to explore the village. It wasn't a very big village. I would estimate less than a thousand people lived here. Probably less than 500. A horse in the field observes me. The mairie, this is the town hall. We get our word mayor from mairie. And again, uh, not much going on. A small village, statue of Mary. This is Ilu and Adine, my two dog companions staying with me in this village. So I was told to go over to this area here to check out this old village kitchen. So this used to be one of four village kitchens and it is still a place where they obviously save wood or is that kindling and this was the place where the village had a big oven and back in the day People did not have ovens in their own house. They had communal ovens, and you arranged for time uh, to bake or cook. So this is where the bread was made for the village. And again, there were two others. I haven't seen them yet. But up here are the implements for moving the bread in and out looks like a of course some american wag would immediately say to themselves yeah we could do outdoor pizza gigs which would kind of ruin the the legacy of this thing to turn it into a, a red solo cup event nevertheless it is a fascinating place. I really like it. And look at this. This must have been... This has no drain. So this must have been just for... Pounding the flour. Or something similar. So 
So, the communal kitchen. What do the younger people do in the village? Just a bucolic village scene with a road tempting me to walk down it. And it was soon time to go into one of the larger small towns in the area, small city, and so uh, had a chance to get out in the car with my friends Patrick and uh, Paulette and her daughter Iris, Iris. And it's just low rolling hills, nothing special, no visitors come to this area, which I love going to places like that in a country. And I've been to a few other places in France like this, but this is probably the most isolated area I've been to, again, between Lyon and Grenoble, uh, just this kind of low mountainous area in between, not even quite the foothills of the Alps yet. And the uh, the road was narrow, windy, twisty. Love this sort of stuff. And I think doing things like this also helped me to feel a bit more normal. Not quite spring here yet. You see a few green buds on the trees. But we were on our way to get photos for Iris, and uh, we would end up in another town. I don't remember the town offhand. But uh, we also stopped at various stores, and I picked up a few French uh, items to uh, munch on. And back in Serain, which was the name of the little village, I uh, just started noticing little things like a couple of ladybug-type insects doing a mating dance, flowers, something that looks like uh, bluebells or lupin. Then I crawled up behind the house and just kind of looked out over the uh, all of the tile uh, roofs, which I love. I'm. It seems the world is being taken over by steel roofs, which is cheaper, but eventually uh, they will rust, even though they are probably made of something supposedly stainless. But I love the fact that uh, in many parts of Europe, the old tile roof still has a great deal of respect. So, back in the yard, uh, I noticed there was a piece of wood here that had some figures carved into it. Which reminds me that uh, we're in the home of Patrick Gabay, who is a 
wood carver, and he was uh, temporarily housing my friend Paulette, sometimes known as Leia. Uh, look at the texture of this. This is just a gate, uh, a door leading into the studio where they did wood carving. Patrick did carving uh, restorations. He, he started off doing puppetry, puppet carving, and then ended up doing restorations for uh, church uh, carvings, uh, frames of paintings, and many other things. Some of these are Paulette's uh, carvings for her puppets. She does a guignol style of puppetry. And she was currently working on a project for a show. And uh, I got her to show me a little bit of one of her creatures. Follow the camera. Talk to me. Uh, I can't. No, oh, it doesn't move. Yet. No, it, it can move, but it doesn't hold. Mm -hmm. So if I start, you know, it'll just. Right, right, right. And here she's using something like a jigsaw to cut out uh, a background for a shadow puppet section of the play. And we'll see the entire piece she cut out later, not painted yet, or or maybe it was painted. Um, but uh, this would be something used in the dark with the empty space uh, being the place for the puppets to appear. Interestingly enough, the, uh, the jigsaw was much faster than that, but it matched the frame rate of the camera. And so the black space here is where the performance goes on. And these are some of Patrick's carvings. This uh, statue of Jesus would be something he would be repairing, most likely. This piece was won by Paulette. And so I had a chance to talk with Patrick and I'll put the full interview up at some point in the future on my other channel. <sighs> so, do we need wooden sculptures in the 21st century? Do we need that? Est-ce qu'on a besoin de sculptures en bois au 21e siècle? C'est incontournable et c'est nécessaire. Le bois est vivant. Le bois renvoie euh, une énergie. Surtout quand il a été sculpté avec amour, avec un sujet très spécifique, euh, du type euh, une vierge à l'enfant, un Christ, un, un saint quelconque, ou même une forme élégante en bois. C'est une merveille. C'est un objet, on va dire décoratif, mais plus que ça. C'est un objet habité. Oui, c'est nécessaire parce que le bois est vivant, et surtout quand il est carré avec le cœur. Donc c'est absolument nécessaire. Mais il soit un saint ou juste une shape élégante. 